Uh, hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you, um, I would like to discuss COP and weather compensation and SCOP, so COP, SCOP and weather compensation and the relationship between them. So I've drawn a very simple uh, graph, it looks like a weather compensation graph that you would find in maybe a boiler manufacturer's IM manual, installation manual. Um, so we've got some points here um, that we can change those that are familiar with weather compensation so I've got an ambient scale down here and I've got a flow temperature scale here so this is outside temp so for example a boiler you know if a you could set a curve up so when it's 15 degrees outside a gas boiler could run at 25 degrees flow and at the other end of the scale you'd also when it's like 2 degrees outside um, the boiler could run at 50 so what we're trying to do is obviously we, there's a lot of talk about trying to make systems efficient and running them at lower temperatures which is better for better for the building fabric better for um, yourself as a person um, you're not uh, spiking in heat um, turning heat on and off you generally background lower low background heat um, is now a fact that it is better for you um, and for your appliance whether it be a heat pump or gas boiler so as I said we can move these around so if I wanted to drop the flow to 40 at 2 degrees obviously I can change the curve and do that so now we've got a shallow curve at the top end of the scale so I've, I've reduced the curve a little bit or reduced the steepness of the curve um, we can also offset um, so anybody who knows what an offset means is you can actually shift the whole line back and forth so we can move the line back and forth either way you know sometimes by maybe five degrees or ten degrees so if, if, if people want it warmer they can they can shift the whole line by five degrees or a couple of degrees if they want it cooler they can shift it back and that gives you a little bit of controllability maybe in the early seasons of of the uh, the winter months but obviously the goal and the design this is your maybe your design criteria here is you know four degrees two degrees outside um, I want my heat system to be 50 so this this is your hundred percent load and that's where you're guaranteeing to to keep your customer warm or your designer to obviously we can move that line back and forth um, you know we, if you're in Scotland obviously that will could be potentially a lot lower minus two minus four and beyond um, so we can still design that and that's how we would base our radiators or underfloor heating systems so COP what is COP it's a term that's used a lot with heat pumps or generally with heat pumps and ground source heat pumps. There's also SCOP. So COP basically is how efficient is my heat pump. And SCOP means seasonal efficiency. How efficient is my heat pump over a course of a whole year. So let's pick uh, some numbers so you would go to like the MCS database or you would look through the specification of a heat pump that you're looking to purchase and you might come across the COP rating of A7W35. So that what that means that at ambient condition 7 at water temperature 35 it's going to give me a COP of 5. But what does that mean? 
where it means I am putting one part of energy in and I'm getting five parts of energy out going into my heating system into my water temperature so so yes yeah, so the the heating system if we can design a heating system at this that that would be great you know that'd be very very efficient that's 500 percent efficient effectively much more than a gas boiler but if I change that to ambient zero water 35 that might only now be 4.5 COP now what is that why is that happening well let's let's draw some lines on on our graph here which has already got loads of lines already but we're trying we're trying uh, get some lines in so I'm gonna I'm gonna do my seven and I'm doing 35 which is about about up here let's just say it's up here so at the intersection that's my COP of five but now I am shifting the ambient conditions a bit further down. I'm actually taking it from seven to zero. So now we're up here. But I still want 35 degrees. So now our center point is there. But why is the COP dropped? Well, it's because you are now feeding it with colder air. So that colder air has a has a relationship, or the air that's passing over into the heat pump has a relationship with the refrigeration. And it can only absorb a certain amount of heat from that air. It's normally about five degrees. So here we're putting in quite nice ambient conditions. So the refrigerant is boiling and in turn, once it hits the compressor, the compressor doesn't have to do so much work to get the end result flow temperature out the other side. Whereas here, we're feeding it colder air. So the refrigerant, before it hits the compressor, is not as warm as it is here. So now the compressor has to work harder to get you the same 35 degrees flow temperature. So because the compressor is working harder, it's using more energy. More energy, you're still putting one part in, but it's absorbing more energy to get that end result. So that's where you may have 4.5. What happens if I want it to ambient zero, water 50? For the same again. The ambient is still the same, but you've now shifted the flow temperature up. So now we've got an intersection here. So now the compressor is having to work harder again. You're still feeding it with the same temperature of air, but because you're asking for 50 degrees flow temperature, the compressor is having to work even harder to achieve that. So it's using more energy and because of that your COP now has dropped down to 2.5 or 2.2. So why do I need to know that? Well you know just from uh, being an engineer going out to site uh, maybe doing some maintenance some problem solving on on a system or a heat pump um, knowing some of how this works or looking up this data and specification in the IM manual of the manufacturer might point you in a in a direction of diagnosis of a problem um, I won't go on to the refrigeration today but um, basically that's the relationship 
that goes on between ambient air compressor and the water flow coming out, water temperature flow coming out makes your COP. So if we can design our systems at zero degrees or minus four with the lowest flow temperature we can get without being silly, you know, we don't want radiators that are ten times the normal size of a gas boiler, but you have to you have to make a balance, you have to make a compromise. But you also have to look at these figures because the heat pump will have a sweet spot. Spot. And that sweet spot is you are feeding it with air. You're asking it to give you a flow temp. And the compressor is running and it's all very very happy very very happy indeed and generally that is around this one here now with different units and manufacturers this actually can shift so for one manufacturer the sweet spot might be down here for another manufacturer the sweet spot might be up here so one heat pump that you might use in the south of England may not meet your, your sweet spot in the highlands of Scotland and the same with the highlands of Scotland you might pick another one from the data of the manufacturer's instructions to go into your property in the highlands of Scotland and you put the same unit down in the south of England and it may not work quite as well and that's because the average temperatures of those areas differ. So the one in Scotland, the average temperature might be four degrees. Down in South, it's about seven degrees. So if you're trying, you're trying to get the heat pump to work in its window of sweet spot as much as it possibly can, and then that will make your system as efficient. So that goes to, de to design. When we design a system, we first work out the heat load for the property and then we start playing with the flow temperatures until we meet our sweet spot condition and then generally once we've hit that sweet spot condition we will then design our system underfloor heating system uh, and radiators to try and keep it in that sweet sweet spot window so yes, um, lots of squiggles, um, I hope that helps. It's just a relationship, you've got to think of low temperature. Low temperature is good for gas boilers, low temperature is very, very important for heat pump technology. Even some of the high temp systems that are coming out now, you can't be blinkered in thinking because it's a high temp heat pump you can just bolt it onto an existing system. You still do need to think about calculations and running it as low as you possibly can. Even a high temperature heat pump that delivers 70 degrees will still have a sweet spot and that sweet spot I can tell you is not 70 degrees. It will be lower down in the range, maybe 30, 35. So design your systems as low temperature as you possibly can. It's good for the fabric of the building, it's good for yourself as a human being. Um, it's clinically proven now that um, we like gradual increasements and decreasements of temperature in our bodies and so does your property so please comment uh, or leave comments please ask questions below um, and uh, we'll speak to you soon many thanks